What is good y'all and welcome back to my channel. The movie I'm reviewing today was recommended to me by my cousin. It is currently available for streaming on Netflix. Now just as a heads up when you go to search for it on Netflix, two movies will come up called Edge of 17. However, this one is called The Edge of 17 and it came out in 2016. So just two little things, 2016 and called The Edge of 17. And also it'll have a, um, it came out more modern. So the picture you'll see is, you know, looks more polished and modern. It'll have a picture of a girl drinking a Slurpee on a curb by herself, which is actually a great microcosm uh, for the movie. There will not be any spoilers in the video. The Edge of 17 is written and directed by Kelly Freeman Craig and stars Haley Steinfield and Haley Lou Richardson. It's about Nadine, who is a 17-year-old junior in high school in Oregon. It takes place around the mid-2000s, so relatively uh, modern times. But um, Nadine is at a time in her life where she just thinks everybody is out to get her. She has, She's a curmudgeon. She just is a hard person to be around and she kind of just shuns everybody out, except for her best friend, Krista, who I'll talk about momentarily. Now, Nadine did experience something very traumatic um, early on in her life when she was about 13 years old, which is part of the reason she has this disdain and this uh, cynicism that she carries. You know, when somebody experiences something uh, traumatic in their life, it can go one of two different ways. You can either move on try to do your best to move on with the process and live your life or you can hold on to it and she's someone that's holding on to it now as i mentioned she kind of shuns everybody out of her life however the few people that she does go to to try to get sympathy one of them being her teacher played by woody harrelson she uses this what happened to her to kind of get sympathy and empathy and she puts on crocodile tears anytime she does need some human affection or sympathy, she uses that rather than just being honest with what she's going through. Like I said, she does have her best friend, uh, Krista, who is basically the only person that she relies on. It's like her connection with the world. And other than that, she's basically blocked off everybody else. Now her and Krista have been childhood best friends. You can tell they have a great bond, a great companionship and love for each other. And you can tell that Krista isn't like Nadine. She's more, she's a little bit more like, I, you know, I'm not, I don't hate people, but she knows why Nadine might be that way. And she's the only one that really knows her. And the only person that Nadine has allowed to know her. So she's let her in. So she kind of gets where her friend is coming from. That's why, you know, they just have that childhood best friend. Their friendship is a strong point in the movie. Um, now, however, Krista does something that Nadine perceives to be a personal attack against her. As I mentioned, anything slightly done, any minor inconvenience to Nadine's life, she thinks it's personal against her. If you were to cut her off, she didn't drive, but she's purposely, if you cut her off in traffic, she would think, oh, they did that because they don't like me. Like you, she's the type of person, like you want to, she's, you want to love her. You want to care about her. You want to just give her a hug and tell her she's 17. Everything's going to be all right. This is the best time of your life. Just relax. You want to give her a hug, but she's the type of person where if you went to give her a hug, she'd be like, well, you're only giving me a hug because you feel bad for me. You don't really care. You know, you know, that type of energy where, where you can tell your friend or somebody's going through something and you just want to like, say, hey man, every, everything's cool, man. Don't worry about it. And then they just continue into their negativity and she's just exhausting. But like I said, she does have her best friend, but her friend does something that Nadine perceives to be a personal attack against her. So she gives her friend an ultimatum, which is the worst thing you can ever do to anybody that you love or and or that loves you. Do not ever give somebody an ultimatum and make them choose between something else that they're passionate about, whether it be job, creativity, um, time they're spending somewhere else or with someone else or doing something. Never give somebody an ultimatum and that's what Nadine does. And you can feel that she almost regrets it instantly, but she can't help but be that because she's holding all this angst inside of her. So you can tell she's never had a good cry. You know, and she just needs to have a good cry, but you, she can't humble herself to do that. She has her brother who's kind of, like when you first see him, you're like, oh, I hate this type of character. He's the jock, he's popular, all the girls like him, he's good looking. But he's the most grounded character 
in the whole movie. Her, her mom loves her, her mom cares about Everybody tries to do the right thing for her, but she just perceives everything as an inconvenience. And then someone else that does try to get into her life, this guy who, who sits next to her in class named Irwin, she, when he tries to talk to her, she, you know, she's flattered a little bit, but she still wants the better looking guy. You know, nothing's good enough. So she's at this point in her life where she's either going to have to say, listen, I'm either going to be just miserable and I'm not going to let anybody in, or I'm going to kind of have, she needs to step back and look at things in perspective. So she's at that crossroads in her life and she's at a crucial point where you're either going to be just upset and miserable your whole life or you're going to allow people in. Uh, this was a really uh, good movie. Very well done. All the characters are very well written, very natural, very organic, um, likable characters. Uh, even Nadine, because she's written, um, the, her background of her character and the way she's written it is it's in a way where like, listen, you want to love her, you want to care about her. She's been through something that most people don't experience and she's carrying that with her and you want to give her a hug but it's so but like you just want her to let somebody in uh, as I mentioned this the characters are very strong in this movie Woody Harrelson who plays her teacher is a this is one of my favorite Woody Harrelson roles uh, but I know he's been in a lot of great movies but I really love him in this movie as a teacher he does such a good job because he just kind of Nadine oh, oh, um, always goes to him at lunch and kind of like he's like listen this is my time to be alone but he knows what she's been through he knows the type he's you know he's a, he's like probably in like his 30s maybe 40s somewhere around there um probably his 40s is probably more realistic but you know he's been a teenager He's been there. He knows she's going through something. He's trying to be patient with her, but she's just so exhausting to be around. But his uh, patience with her, and you can tell he has this care for her and he likes her as a student because she, she's a deep person. Now, my other favorite character in the movie is Irwin, who has a crush on Nadine. Now, I relate a lot to Irwin because he, he, they're, jun they're juniors in high, uh, high school. And that's also why you're rooting for her. She's like, Senior year is such a fun time. Don't go into that being a curmudgeon. That's literally going to be one of the funnest years of your life, especially if you have your if you have your grades relatively in order like I did. And that's all you really and you just need to be pulling those C's and B's down, and you're going to have a great senior year. Uh, but Irwin is a um, he's he's a he's making a film. He's a very smart kid, but he's a little bit awkward with girls. You can he doesn't hang out with the popular kids. He hang he's more of the smart crowd or whatever. But he has a crush on her. He starts trying to talk to her. He's a little bit awkward. But he's always slight walker, but she's also awkward, so it kind of uh, blends very well. His, the way he talks to her, I can totally relate to. Because at that, when you're in that junior year of your life, sophomore junior year, you're like, listen, I want to talk to girls, but you don't want to face rejection. Um, but you also have to, or get off the pot. Either you're going to do it, or you're just going to be alone forever. So the best, of, this little side note, some of the best advice I ever got when it came to talking to girls was, I forget who said to me, it was somebody, like one of my friend's brothers or something like that, and we we're all just talking about it, and I was, you know, kind of worried about getting rejected, and what did they say no? And he was just like, Scott, you're already at no. You can't get any, you can't go back from no. That's the worst that's gonna happen is you're gonna be back, right back where you started. So Irwin um, breaks out and talks to her, and I also like the character because Nadine is kind of in, awkward girl she's you know not you know your traditional character and I was always interested in those girls that kind of kept to themselves they were very private didn't buy into all the fashion trends and all that now I would probably be a little bit intimidated to talk to her because like I said she shuns everybody out so I, I tip my hat to him for even having the goal uh, to do that but yeah this is a very uh, good movie Good, good music throughout. Nothing ever too heavy. So it's, but it's a really a character-driven movie. This would be a great movie to watch. It went well for a teenager, of course, but also someone in their twenties or any point in your life where you're just kind of like, like thinking every the world is out to get you. You're the only one that has problems. Woe is me. It kind of makes is a movie that makes you look in the mirror and say, you know, it could be worse. Everybody's eating up sandwich so you know and mine just tastes different 
you know, but we're all doing that together. The brother's a very good character. Um, mom, you know, her relationship with her mom is interesting. Um, it's a little bit awkward, but you know, it, her, you, she has people around her that care about her. And that's the lesson of the movie is appreciate the ones that appreciate you. You don't need a bunch of friends. You don't always need to be, that's kind of a theme for the month almost with a lot of these movies. You don't need to, you don't need to have be Papa, but you kind of have to go through this phase of your life. You could sit there and you could probably tell this to a teenager, but they're just going to have to go through it. That's all it is. And it's, it's a painful process to watch because you know when someone is just like, yeah, come on, everything's going to be okay. Everybody doesn't hate you. It's going to be cool. But yeah, this is a very good coming of age movie. I, it's, it's, it's very good. I remember watching it a while back. I think my cousin even recommended it to me when it first came out, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody did. And I watched it and I really liked it. Me and my cousin are very much on the same page when it comes to uh, movies. Either we're on the same page or we're on the opposite page. It's one of those types of things. But 85% of the time, we agree. And this is a great call by her. So I appreciate um, the recommendation. Nothing really not to like about this. This is a, it's a lighthearted movie. It's something that we all can learn from. Anytime we're being overly negative or self-centered, this would be a good movie to watch. And just to kind of, hey, just put things in perspective. Everything's gonna be okay. You know, that type of thing. But yeah, um, great little movie to watch. I definitely uh, recommend it. Guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I greatly appreciate your time. Whatever you guys are doing, please take care, be well, and have a great rest of your day.